Hello again. I've been asked to do a talk about logarithms, so here you go. I'm going to spend the next 10 minutes talking a little bit about logarithms, where they came from, and what they're good for. Um, logarithms were originally proposed in around 1615, the early 1600s, by a fellow named John Napier, who was the eighth Laird of Merchiston. He was a Scottish nobleman uh, and uh, sometimes mathematician. And he was able to publish a description of logarithms and a table, the very first table of logarithms. Remember back in the days before calculators, you had to use tables to uh, look things up. All right, here's the mathematical definition you always see of logarithms. There's this number b, which we call the base. Take the base to some power of y and you get this number x. And if you want uh, to know what y is, you take the log base b of x. Now that's clearly correct, but it's a little dry. I have a hard time working through that. So let me show you uh, some examples here. Let's say that I have 100 and I want to multiply it by 100. Well that's easy to do. And you just write this out. And that's 10,000. And if you're like me, you pretty much start counting zeros there. Well there's four zeros over here, there must be four zeros over here. What we're really counting is exponents. What we're really doing is this. And this is what uh, this was Napier's insight, and I'm sure lots of other people had noticed this too. He was the first one to formalize it. He noticed that when I wanted my multiply, want to multiply 100 by 100 to get 10,000, what I'm really doing is I'm adding exponents. 2 plus 2 equals 4. Well, adding is easier than multiplying, so he reasoned that if I had a table where I could write numbers as powers of 10 or powers of something else, multiplication could be turned into addition. And that's just exactly what he did. So what you would write now is log 2 plus log 2, I'm sorry, log 100, log plus log 100 equals 2 plus 2 equals 4. And if you want to find out what the product is, you raise 10 to that power. So what you would be doing is, in order to do this, and this is a simple calculation, we don't need to use logarithms, but it's easy to see what they're good for by using these simple numbers where we know what the answer is going to be. All right, let's just say this is hard to do. It's not, let's pretend it is. Okay, hard to do, I'm going to convert these to logarithms, and I go in my logarithm table and I look up log, base 10 log now, of 100 is 2, so 2 plus 2 equals 4. I've done this in sort of logarithm domain. Now I want to get my, the product back. I go back into my log tables and I take 10 to the fourth power and I get 10,000. That's how logarithms turn multiplication into addition. And similarly, they turn exponents into multiplication. They take every operation and they move it down a level. So if I wanted to say take 100 to the second power, Right, which is the same as multiplying 100 by 100. What I could do is I could say, I could say 2 log 100 equals some number, and that number is 2 times the log of 100 is also 2. That's 2 times 2. That equals 4. And log 4 equals 10,000, just like before. All right. So what he's done is come up with a way to turn multiplication into addition and exponents into multiplication. Now this, is, this seems trivial in an age where everybody has a pocket calculator. In 1615, nobody had pocket calculators. So let's take maybe a, a more difficult example and show how logarithms would work. Let's say I want to multiply two numbers, and I just made these numbers up. They don't have any physical significance as far as I know. Okay. If you multiply 1,250 by 1,743, you get 2,178,750. Is that right? Yeah, I got that right. Okay, so this is, this is trivial if you've got a calculator. If you don't have a calculator, eh, it takes a while, but it's, it, it takes time. It's not terribly hard, but it's tedious. Okay? And time is worth something here. So if I say log 1250 plus 
log 1743, what I'm going to find out is you add those two up and you get 6.338207. Now, there's a reason I'm going to so many decimal places. It actually is going to kind of matter here. All right. This number, just, just for completeness, that number is, let's see, 3.241297, and that number is 3.09691, okay? That's how I got that. Now, the way this should work is that if I take 10 to that power, I'm going to get 10 to the 6.338207 power, and that indeed works out to Let's see, 217875, oh, which is my original number. Now, I carried this really, really uh, far. There's, there's quite a few digits there. What if I don't want to work to that many? If I'm working by hand, that's going to be a problem. Well, let's, let's cut this off right there, okay? So I've got 6.3382 as the, the exponent here. You wouldn't think that would make that much difference, but it really does. Okay, now I get 2178713 approximate, it's actually 7.712.8 something. That's about what I get. I've got a little bit of error down there. I'm off by about, what's that, 25, 27, 27 I guess? Um, sorry, 37? That's just by rounding off those last couple of decimal places there. So when you're working with logarithms, you have to be careful. All right? Now let's let's try something else here. Okay, let's try something that's very difficult to do by hand, trivial to do on a calculator, of course, but easy using logarithms. Okay, let's try this. Let's take 11 and let's raise it to a power. But instead of raising it to an integer power, which is easy. We'll raise it to the 2.345 power. Now, in principle, there's no, no difficulty in that. There's nothing mathematically um, uh, you know, not, not allowed. That's certainly a legitimate mathematical operation. How many of us know how to do that by hand? I mean, I'm not sure I do. I know how to punch it into a calculator. It just turns out that's 276.736167. Okay? Again, way more decimal places than you'd normally use. Now, how do you do that by hand? I'm not sure I know, but I do know how to do that using logarithms. What I can do is I can say 2.345 times log of 11. Now, if you look at this, um, log of 11 should be a little more than 1 because log of 10 is 1. So we're working in base 10 here. Okay, so that is 2.3 three, four, five times, and the log of 11 is 1.041393. A little bit more than 1 because that's a little bit more than 10. Right? You multiply that out, you get 2.442066. Okay? Alright. Next thing you do is raise 10 to that power. So 10 to the 2.442066 power is indeed that number again. 276.736 whatever. Okay. So there we've got it. We've taken something that's extremely difficult to do by hand and turned it into something that's a lot less difficult to do by hand. Right? So th they were um, John Napier was credited by uh, some scientists with having doubled the working life of the average scientist because it took so much less time to do routine calculations. He speeded up the process of scientific advance, of mathematical advance. All right now, up to now, we've been doing everything with base 10, raising 10 to uh, various powers. I'm about out of time here. The next uh, video is going to be on other bases, particularly base E. E is actually a number like pi. Um, logs to the base E are called natural logarithms, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about those and where E came from.